there. Welcome to One Church. It's great to have you here today. We are going to get the service kicked off here in just a little bit by having our worship team come out to lead us in a few songs. We will have the lyrics up on the screen so that you can sing along and worship with us. Then, a few minutes after that, one of our pastors will come to the stage and share a message about Jesus. If it is your first time at One Church, it is an honor to have you here with us today, and we hope that you feel at home here. If you are a first-time guest, as we wait for the service to start, I would like to encourage you to fill out an orange Connect card that can be found in the back of the seat in front of you. We will collect all filled out cards later in the service. Thank you again for being here today. The church service will be starting in about 30 more seconds. Oh, no. 
will keep God from you and me. There's nothing you've ever done. There's nothing that the enemy has ever done. There's nothing that could keep us apart. I love that. That God's love for us is so deep. David in Psalm says, where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I go to the depths, you're there. If I go to the far side of the sea, even there, your right hand will hold me fast. I hate to tell you this, but you're not getting away from him. I love that. God is reckless in his love for us. And he calls us to himself, our true home. We're going to sing this next song. And it's a song of thanksgiving to God. Let's just thank him and praise him today for that amazing love and everything he is to us.
death and resurrection and thank you for the power of your blood I am overwhelmed by your affection the kindness and the greatness of your love kindness the kindness and the greatness of your straight from you, Father, love of a mother for their children. Such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Father, today we're grateful to you. We're grateful for all that you've done for us, the ways you've provided for us, protected us, been there for us, never abandoned us, but always made a way for us to return home to you. Just like a mother's love never quits, your love never, ever quits, Father. And we're so grateful for that today. Today, we want to praise you, first and foremost, and glorify your name. And secondly, we pray that whatever comes from our praise of you will filter down into our lives, will teach us, help us to grow, become better people, more like you, Father. Less of, the, less of us and more of you today is our prayer, Father. So first, may you be praised, and second, may we grow and receive and be more like you, Father. We love you. We give today to you for your name and your glory and your honor. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Good morning. How are you? Happy Mother's Day. Got any moms in the house today? Yes, yes. 
Well, I want to welcome you here to One Church today, and as I do that, I'd like to invite our families that are going to be involved with our baby dedications to go ahead and start making their way to the stage. We're excited for a special day. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time today, we want to welcome you. Uh, how many mothers we have in the audience today? Raise your hand if you're a mom. All right. Hey, dads, kids, everyone else, let's give these ladies a huge hand. I don't know about you, but uh, mom in our household is a big deal. Uh, mom in our household is the glue. Mom in our household is a, well, if you want to see what a, a momless household is like, you can go to the kids department today. Uh, we've got some of our dads helping out in the kids department today, which is awesome. We're thankful for that. And uh, if your kids are a little amped and wired today, we're just giving them uh, uh, pop tarts and uh, sweet tarts. And we, we, we brought in the, uh, the axe throwing. That way we thought they'd... We thought that'd keep them busy, so we're good with that. So today, we've got some babies up here, and now, let me give a disclaimer, all right? Because here's what everyone wants to do. Think about this. When you have a newborn baby, what's the one thing that you're afraid for everyone in the world to do? Touch them, all right? So I know the desire is like you see a kitten on the side of the road, oh, I want to touch it. No, don't touch the new babies. Don't touch the new babies, all right? We just got them back here. We don't, we don't, so, so be careful, all right? You can look from afar, take pictures, but uh, look at the twins here. There's two of them. There's two of them. So here's what I want to do. I want to bring up Lisa here uh, and talk about, this is pretty cool. You want to bring that out front? Yeah. All right, let's do that. All right. It's a lot of responsibility. It is. It's a lot of glass. Shane happens, remember. All right. All right. So I've asked Lisa. She did this last uh, Mother's Day with us. Was it last Mother's Day? Or was it graduation Sunday? It was together, I think. Well, this is uh, parents. I'm sorry. I hope you brought a Kleenex. Uh, this still gets to me when I hear it. But I want to... Uh, here, hand me a mic back here. So Lisa can talk about the beads here. All right. Here you go. So this is Lisa... Here, let's all scoot down this way just a little bit. And that way, everyone's kind of in the light here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So this is Lisa. She's our children's pastor here. And she brought this to us last year and absolutely loved this concept, loved this idea. Because it gives you some perspective on the life that we have with our kids, the time that we have with our kids. So I'm going to turn this over to Lisa so you can explain the, uh, the, and the I'm jar. I'm going to try to explain this as quick as possible because there is a lot of babies up here and none of them are crying yet. So we're just trying to make this quick. So in these jars, um, you start out with 936 weeks is the calculation from birth to graduation. Obviously that varies, you know, with graduation dates and whatnot. But um, just wanted to show this year, these are some tiny babies like these guys were born what was their date of birth again 128 128 so like january 28th and this is how many weeks that have already gone by and this is the number of weeks left until they graduate and so the concept is if you were to take one of these out every week it will be empty on graduation which got me last year big time but um it just shows us how we need to be intentional in the time we have with the kids especially as parents, because we get them at church an average of 40 hours a week per child. Sometimes year, more if we get them on a year, Wednesdays. Right? 40 hours a year. 40 hours a year, yeah. yeah. 40 hours a year. Yeah, not 40 hours a week. 40 hours a year. Sometimes that doubles if you're here every Wednesday. <laughs> but, um, Where do we sign up for that program? Exactly, 40 hours a week? Exactly. <laughs> so we're with them a, a, a minimal amount of time, really, in the grand scheme of things. So it, it's great that we get to partner with parents and help them on the journey um so we just i did these just to show you all as a tearjerker the weeks that you've already gone by with your children and then these are the ones that are left that you get to take home and you can take the jewels out of them just to kind of keep track of where you're at yeah last year uh it was mother's day and graduation sunday yes. and you had trey up here yes and she removed his last bead yeah. on the stage <laughs> so that wasn't emotional at it all it was emotional it was so emotional. trey yes. is her son yeah so here we go. Let's start here. Uh, who we got here? Who we got? Uh, let's see here. We'll go down to the end. The Robins here. That would be the All right. Little Charlotte. All right. Do me a favor. Would you... Oh, well, we don't want to scare her, but this is little Charlotte, and this is uh, the, the daughter of uh, 
Patrick. Uh, I feel horrible. Patrick and Alicia. I'm sorry. I've gone stage d- dumb. Patrick and Alicia Robbins. And Patrick here is looking very svelte. You've shaved the beard. Yeah, yes, yes. But right here, um, when was she born? Uh, 2-11. 2 I love it. February 11th. So here's a certificate for her. Thank you. And here is your beads. Thank you. Absolutely precious. Thank you. I love your boots. <laughs> All right. And one bead. <laughs> now this is a new, new baby. When was he born? 5-1. This is Christopher. And he, so he was born on May 1st. So he's a May Day baby. And I got to see him Friday night for the first time, which was pretty awesome. He, he came out to the softball games. And so here he is. And if you get a chance, um, look but don't touch. Okay? Look but don't touch. Christopher Lee Wayne. Leo. Leo. Oh, yeah, Leo. Christopher Leo Wayne McCarty. Well, here is his one bead that has been removed for one week. <laughs> and his beads here. Congratulations. He's beautiful. I love it. All right. And we have Asher with Jake and Krista Asbell. And this is mini Krista. Like, he looks just like you. Jake has no genetics in here at all. And he was born, uh, what was his birthday? December 28th. December 28th. So here's his beads that have already been gone by his weeks. And here's for Asher. And beads here. Beautiful baby. You got them? All right, all right. And these guys right here. I love this. So we've got Tyler and Tate, right? Tyler and Tate. Which one's which? Do you know? I'm going to say Tate and Tyler. You guys look so much alike. Oh, my gosh. Little Lucas. All right. So you have Tyler? Yes. Okay. This one's for Tyler. And when's their birthday? 128. 128. Well, this here shows you the number of weeks that have gone by already. And this is what you have left until they graduate look at these guys oh my gosh i love it so i'll leave these here for a moment for you they were much smaller last time i saw them so this is tyler and tate here's what i want to do i want to pray over these babies uh we're so excited to dedicate them today and so what we do when we dedicate them to the lord is these families come here together and commit together and we do it as a church as well to uh, raising these kids in an environment that they would know jesus And so that's today what we do. We come and we pray and we commit to that as a body, as a family. And so let's pray over that as we do that today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity today to come in this place. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that these children are. Lord, each and every single one of them that are on this stage right now, I know they've been prayed for, that they've been loved, and that they are a blessing to their family. Even in the moments, God, that they're frustrating, they are still a blessing. And so, Lord, I know that today we as a body, we as a church, we as a family commit to creating an environment for them that they would get to know who you are, that they would be raised in an environment, Jesus, where they would be nurtured and ushered into your presence. God, we thank you for these parents, and we pray that they would commit in their own households to do the same. That Jesus, as, uh, as they grow older, that they would take time not to just teach them about sports, not just to teach them about the world, but God, to put a foundation under them that resides and rests on Jesus. God, when we start there, everything else falls into place. They become good children. They become good fa- uh, fathers themselves and good mothers themselves. Someday they'll be great husbands and great wives, great friends, great co-workers, but most of all, passionate followers of Christ. And so today, Jesus, we thank you for the children, for the gift that they are. And Jesus, we thank you for the gift that you are. God, we thank you that you gave your son to us. Today, uh, we give our children to you. In your precious name, we ask these things, that you would bless this occasion. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. We thank you so much for allowing us to be here with you guys today. And it's awesome to see all of you here. It's amazing to see him here today. So thank you. So let's quietly give him a big hand. Don't scare him. Just a little golf clap here. All right. God bless you guys. Make sure we get a picture with you guys out in the setting in the lobby. We'd love to get a picture of you. Awesome. Very cool. Very precious. Beware, Dusty. We'll grab your kids. (laughs) 
Hey, as they're exiting today, I want to invite you to be a part of something with us today. We're going to enter into a time of worship uh, through the act of giving. And if you're joining us for the first time today, don't give anything except this. Let us know that you're here. And there's a simple way that you can do that. There's an orange card in front of you. It's a welcome card, a connect card. If you would take that card, fill that information out. Here in just a little bit, we're going to have an opportunity where we give high fives, we shake hands, we welcome each other to church. Take that card back here to the corner, and we've got a gift for you. We've got a one church tumbler just for you. If you just fill that out and let us know that you're here, we would love that so much. And uh, that's all that we would ask that you give us today. And for the rest of you that are joining us that are going to give with us, there's a few days, ways that you can give. As the bucket goes around, simply drop something in. You can use the envelope in the chair near you and use it to put something in there and drop it in the bucket as it goes by. You can take out your smartphones and you can give online. You can go to our website, which is on the screen right now, onechurchjoplin.org, and click on our giving tab. Or you can go and text to give and text this number 417-200-4104 and in the body of the text put the amount you want to give, hit send and follow the prompts that it gives you from there. So as we do that today, let's pray over that. Heavenly Father, Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to worship in this place. Thank you for, the, for those that gather here today. And thank you for your son. The hope that we have in him is the reason that we come. So Jesus, we love you and we thank you. Take this offering. Use it to expand your kingdom, expand your territory. God, I pray that you would bless the giver in a mighty way today. In your name we pray these things. Amen. So as you're giving today, there's going to be some announcements on the screen. Check those out. We'll be back here in just a moment. Hello. Welcome to One Church. My name is Chase Bullman, and this is The Buzz. Our students are having a fundraiser for their summer youth conference at McAllister's on Tuesday. To support our students, all you have to do, go eat at McAllister's between 5 and 9 p.m. The men's Bible study group is going to start meeting on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. starting this week. So men, don't miss it this Wednesday at One Church at 6 o'clock. We will honor graduates next week during the 9.30 service. If you're a graduate, we would like to honor you, so be sure to stop by the corner just to let us know. If you're signing up a child for Camp Wanna Stay and you want to lock in the total price of $175, you will need to have your $50 deposit made by next Sunday. Now after next weekend, the total cost goes up to $200. I want to thank you for being here this weekend. Hope that you enjoy the rest of the service. Now, if you have any questions about anything we announced here today, I want to encourage you to stop by the corner. It's our information hub for everything One Church. Somebody back there would be more than happy to provide you with any information that you might need. Today at McAllister's, uh, our, our youth have done a lot to raise uh, funds for camp. And I think, is this the last fundraiser? This will be the last fundraiser before they head to Memphis this year. So come eat uh, dinner with us on Tuesday night. And one thing that didn't get in the announcements that I wanted to make sure you see is we did this last year. This is a really great campaign. Um, you'll see a baby bottle as you leave today. And it is a cha it's called the Change for Life through Life Choices. And last year, we took these baby bottles. You pick them up today, Mother's Day, and return them on Father's Day. And the thought is that you take your loose change. Uh, from now until then and just put your loose change into the baby bottles and there's some instructions in here inside that give you um, if you want to write a check or give something other than change how you can do that um, if you fill it out it says just dump it into a bag and fill your bottle again um, last year as a church just through the change people filling these up we gave almost uh, five hundred dollars through just loose change to life choices last year through just lose change. So if you'd be willing to take one of these, you don't have to, but as you leave today, um, there's going to be a person on each side of the doors that has the baby bottles and a tub, and then something else that will be there is mothers. Uh, we invite you to take, there'll be some uh, kids that have some gifts for you today that they've created, correct? Yes, and so as you leave today, grab a baby bottle and grab one of those gifts today, all right? So with that being said, kiddos, we love you. Go have a great time throwing axes, all right? I'm kidding. There's no axes. We've just got BB guns, okay? And for the rest of you, find someone to shake hands and give them a big high five. Welcome to One Church today.
of Rebel. I know it's easy to feel like you're not good enough, but let's kill the comparison. The world doesn't know you, and it can't define you. Mama, remember, you are enough. You are beautiful. You are killing it. You are a warrior, and you are winning this war. That better. There we go. Good morning. I, I just had to do that because uh, a couple weeks ago when I preached, I couldn't breathe. Um, I couldn't take a deep breath and people were worried. I was fragile and I, and I was. Don't worry, I'm not dying. I'm good. And it's probably scary because I was gone the next week, right? It's like, oh my gosh, he died. What's going on? No. Uh, I didn't say it in the first one. I said it in the second one. I don't know why I didn't say it. I had a surgery, okay? So I had a surgery and because of that surgery, I wasn't able to take a deep breath. But life is good. I'm back. I have my energy. I can take a deep breath. I can walk across the stage. Um, I'm not allowed to lift over 25 pounds yet. So if it looks like I'm not doing work, that's why. All right. I feel like a, I feel like a, a ninny because I can't do anything right now. You should see my poor wife. We were walking out of the softball tournament a couple weeks ago and I've got like my, my cup and she's pulling, she's pulling the wagon, got the, 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 the bucket and all the kids. I'm like, sorry, babe. I said, everybody just probably thinks I'm the biggest, like, chauvinistic jerk. Like, come on, woman. Anyway, no, but hey, how many moms do we have here? I love Mother's Day. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give a high five. You ladies deserve more than a day. You deserve. So we're making this Mother's Day week. All right. Mother's Day week. Julie, you can hold me to that because I said it from the stage. So Mother's Day, you deserve more than just today. I don't know about you guys, but in our household, it would be a mess if we didn't have mom. I don't know what it would look like. The kids would be eating like popcorn and Pop-Tarts every night. And I don't know what, they're, they probably wouldn't match. Um, they wear the same ponytail every day because it's the only hairstyle I know how to do. Um, I don't know about you guys, maybe you're different, but if we didn't have mom, Julie's in the front row going, yes, amen, amen. But if we didn't have mom, I don't know what it would be like. So thank you, moms. We love you. We love you. We love you. And today, we want to celebrate all ladies, not just moms. I know there's a lot of ladies out there that aren't moms yet, that are trying to become moms or want to be moms. God has something for you. You have a purpose. And here we are. We're going to talk about uh, what the purpose of of, of ladies, what the purpose of moms, and I love this, the thought of being a rebel mom, because if you are a believer and a mom, you are rebellious compared to the world. You do things differently than the world, and so that's the thought process behind today's message. So here's what we want to do. I want to start and just open up with a word of prayer for you moms, and we're going to jump into this message. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for the gift of a mother. Lord, there's something about a mom. There's something about mom's spit. There's something about mom's love. There's something about mom's cooking. There's something that moms have that no one else does. And so as a child of a mom, I thank you for that gift. I thank you that you knew as a boy I would need a mom. I thank you that as my daughters, you thought of them ahead, that they would need a mom. God, your infinite wisdom brought us something to this world that cannot be replaced. And so, Lord, today we honor and thank you for the blessing of moms today. Lord, take this message, use it to encourage, use it to build up, and use it to edify your kingdom in the name of Jesus today. Amen. Amen. We're going to start here. If you have your Bible, you can open up to the book of Psalms. We're going to start right here at the beginning. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. And David is writing here, and he's talking about being blessed And he says in his writing here, he says, Blessed is the one who does not walk and step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields fruit in a season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. 
And so what David is doing right here is he is painting a picture of what a blessed life looks like. So if we were to live a blessed life, this is a little bit what it looks like. He says, if you live a blessed life, you would be like a tree planted by streams of water, uh, which yields fruit and its season whose leaves do not wither. And so if we were to transfer that to what our life would look like, what does it mean to yield fruit? Anybody got some kids? Anybody got some kids in this place? We have a lot of kids in this place. Some of you are more fruitful than others. Really fruitful. All right? And some of you uh, are, 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 are just getting started in your season. You're just getting started, but there's something about the fruit. And somebody that, as a parent, that is firmly planted in the Lord, as a parent that is raising their children in the Lord, our children, believe it or not, are our fruit. Our marriage is our fruit. Our life is our fruit. And if we are planted in Christ, our leaves do not wither. And so David is painting a picture of what it means to walk in this life rightly. He says, if you walk in this life rightly, you get a blessed life. But here's the truth. We live in a fallen world and believe it or not, we mess up. Even moms. Kids, your muffs, your mom messes up. Anybody in here as a mom, you've ever messed up? Have you ever wanted a redo? Have you ever had a day that just didn't go right? Does it ever feel like you're taking two steps forward and one step back? Have you ever felt like, you know what? I said some things maybe I shouldn't have said. I did something I shouldn't have did. I was frustrated by something else. And I projected on my kids. I projected on my husband. And I just had one of those days where you look at that and you go, how did I get to this point? And then you're like, yeah, my kids did it to me, right? It's my fruit. Bad fruit. Rotten fruit, right? No. We live in a fallen world and we make mistakes. And there's going to be times in our life where we look at life and we realize that we're not perfect. And the truth is that, hey, Father's Day is coming up and I'm going to rag on dads, okay? But today, mom, you're in the target. You're in the zone. No, we're going to lift you up. But think about that. I say this because sometimes we as families, and especially ladies, can look at other moms, and sometimes it can get you down, especially if you look at other moms' Facebook or their Twitter or things like that. You look at that, and their kids are like, every morning, they're in like a a perfectly matched outfit, and their hair's all done, or they take a picture of like a family breakfast, or or I don't know, their their kids are getting straight A's, or just things like that. And you can look at other people, and you look at your life, and you look at other people, and you look at your life... And sometimes it can get you down. And you look at that and you say, what's going on? Sometimes it feels like life is spinning out of control because it happens so fast. The beads this morning totally share with us, with us how fast life happens. Sometimes things happen, mom, be prepared, that are beyond your control. Have your kids ever embarrassed you? Has your husband ever embarrassed you? Julie, be quiet. Sometimes things are going to happen that are beyond your control. And I know that God gave you this gift to be able to spin plates and keep everything balanced and multitask like nobody's business. But sometimes things happen beyond your reach. How do we respond? What do we do? Have you ever needed a second chance? Anybody in here, you ever needed a second chance? Have you ever needed a redo? Have you ever said, hey, let's start this over. Let's take that one back. Let's have a redo. Well, I want to share this prayer with you today, ladies. This is a little thing that I saw that I wanted to share. It says, I pray, women, that you would be women of prayer. I pray that you would be women of prayer so that you would be a rebel for God in this godless world. That you would live for Christ in a world that lives for itself. I pray that you would be women of prayer, that you would cause trouble for Satan and advance the kingdom of God at home, in the church, and wherever God places you on a map. I pray that you would be women of prayer so that God's word would continually awaken you to true wisdom. And if you are single, that Christ would be your first love, that you would leverage your single life for God's work, living pure and on purpose, and if and when you marry, that it would be to a man after God's own heart. I pray that you would be women of prayer, that if you are married, that Christ would be the source of loving your husband, and you were curious, uh, and your curious spirit of peace over a period of contention in your home. 
And if you have children, that you would pour into them as your first career. Whatever else you do in the marketplace, that your children would be poured into like Mary poured into Jesus and prayed over Jesus. I pray that you would be women of prayer. That all worry and fear would find rest in God. That any bitterness or wounds would be healed through God. That your sense of womanhood would be fed and fueled by God. And that your life would be blessed under God. So my heart, ladies, is that wherever you are right now, that we would understand the power of prayer. And that's what I want to jump into right here, because this right here is what we're going to look at that the Luke shares with us. I pray these things for you that you'd get life right, that you would find the sweet spot. Sometimes it doesn't feel like we're in the sweet spot of life. Sometimes we walk into church and we feel like things are disorganized and frazzled and things are just being held together by a piece of duct tape and it just feels like, hey, things, the, the wheels are just about to come off the cart. But hey, that's just called childhood. That's just called family life. That's just reality for us. But God gives us this, uh, this special ability to look at these things. And that's what happens. That's why we need to be here together. We need to look at each other because there's something about when we're here together and we see someone else, you can look at someone else. And when you're in person, you see their flaws. When you see someone else's kids walking, yelling and screaming, it makes me feel good because it's not just me. When I see someone else's kid throw a fit in the floor at, at, at a shopping, you know, Walmart, something like that, I don't look at him and say, oh my gosh, those parents. I look at him and say, I feel for you. I've been there. I get it. You're still loved it's okay and i think so often we try to carry ourselves in such a perfect way we want to look a certain way i mean have you ever threatened your children within an inch of your life before they get out of the car at church like so help me if you get out of the pastors here there's people here they know us have you ever tried like, have you ever done that i have this morning i went in i mean I, I trampled all over libby she's had this rotten attitude and i was like you better help you better, you better. she's like yes sir when we walk into that church, you better walk along. You better, you better love Jesus. <laughs> you ever done something like that? Like, have you had those? And then afterwards, you're like, man, that was rough. <laughs> but it happens, people, even for me. I'm just telling you. Just understand, when you're having these kinds of things, understand that something in your, your life is going right. That you're, you're target, man. That there's something in your life that is going right. And I have the worst ADD in the world, and I got started before I had a chance to do something. So before I forget this, I need to do it. I watched online last week from Kansas City, and Dylan Casey, I just saw him sitting back, back there, did an absolutely knockout of the park job. Um, do me a favor. Give it up for that guy. I just want you to know that as a church, we are extremely blessed to have this guy and his family. His talents that he does behind the scenes are amazing, but it's amazing to see that this guy... Normally, when you have a guy that does technology and things like that, you don't want him on the stage. They're normally like trolls, right? <laughs> Body odor. No I'm kidding. But, but not Dylan. He's amazing. He's like this guy. He's like, man, whatever you need, I can do it. He's like, I'm going to be a dad. I can do that, right? So anyway... You're awesome. That was great. Seriously, it was excellent. So let's jump in here. Talking about the sweet spot of life. Life is going to be filled with problems. It's going to be filled with breakdowns. But the ultimate mother, Mary, demonstrates what it's like to get life right with her son. And the doctor, Cool Hand Luke, tells us his, her story in Acts. So as you're turning to the book of Acts, we'll get it up here on the screen. Actually, we're going to turn to Luke first, chapter 1, verse 46 through 48. Let me give you a little background. Mary was a virgin, betrothed to be married to Joseph. The Holy Spirit came to her and had a conversation through an angel and told her that she had God's favor and that she was chosen to bring Jesus into the world. And Mary's response was one of obedience. And she said, may it be as you have said. And here's something that, that we need to think about that we don't often compare ourselves. But what God asked Mary to do, he asked everyone else to do as well. If we are restored through Christ, he asked us to do the same thing that Mary did. What did Mary do? Mary brought Christ, Jesus, into the world. We are asked to do the same things in our life. We are asked to do the same thing, that we would bring Jesus into the world. It's crazy to think that what Mary did, now we don't have to go through the birth, we don't have to go through all that, but we were asked to do the same thing, carry Jesus into the world around us. 
So Mary, being Mary, she was set apart. She got life right at a very young age. Mary was around the age of 15. And think about this. At the age of 15, there's some struggles that our teens deal with today. Maybe Mary didn't have to deal with them. Maybe Mary did. But Mary understood something. She got purity right at a very young age. She got obedience right at a very young age. She got prayer right at a very young age. She got praise right at a very young age. So let's look here in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 48. And Mary said, and this is a Mary song, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. So Mary is saying that all generations will call me blessed because of what has been bestowed upon her. She didn't look at her life and say, "Uh uh-uh, ain't nobody got time for that. Uh Uh-uh, I got things to do with my life. She answered in an act of obedience and she said, because of this, generations will say that I am blessed because I get to be the woman that brings the Christ, that brings Jesus and carries carries him into the world. And so at a very young age, this is Mary at the beginning of her parenthood of Jesus. She got praise right early in life. She got prayer right early in life. She got it right. But a lot of us don't get it right so quickly. And that's where I say, thank God for second chances. Now, let's fast forward. That's the beginning of Jesus' life. Let's fast forward to the book of Acts. Mary's about 49 to 50 years old right here. And we're seeing here in the book of Acts, um, she's here in the upper room. She started her parenthood in prayer and praise and still is. The Romans at this point think Jesus is dead, but here is the beginning of the second chance that we have. In Acts chapter 1 verse 14, it says right here, it says, They joined all together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So she started Jesus' life in prayer and in praise She had in her song, she was praying to God and giving him praise for the blessing that had been bestowed upon her. And here she is, 49, 50 years old, um, looking at her life and saying, you know what? I'm going through a tragedy. I'm about to lose my son. In fact, I already have, quote unquote, but I'm still praising God. I'm still giving him praise. I'm still giving him prayer. I'm still living that life. You see, Mary had a life that wasn't perfect. Her son had a life that was perfect, but she didn't. So even the second chances that Jesus gives us was for Mary as well. But through her life, through the frustrations, through the anxiety, through the pain, can you imagine what was going through Mary's mind, Mary's heart, when her son was being crucified? She didn't cry out and yell out to God, how could you? She didn't cry out and yell out to God, this is my son, not yours. She still gave him praise and prayer. She started in prayer and praise and was still doing it. And if there's something that I want you to learn today, moms, or want you to hear today is this, is that of all the people in the world, it matters who prays. You see, Mary was the one praying over Jesus at this point. She didn't look at her life and say, you know what, it's too tough, it's too difficult, someone else needs to take it from here. There was something about the fact that Mary prayed in this moment. And it matters who prays. Have you ever had something in your life that was so great, so big, that you said, hey, let's gather others and have them pray over this? And that's, that's good. You want to do that. But sometimes we think if we could just get the right person to pray, if we could just get this, this one person, you know, th- find the most faithful person you have. Find grandma, find grandpa, find the pastor. Get them up here. They need to pray. They need to pray. They need to pray. And sometimes we think that if we can just find the right person to pray, that something could happen. But here's the truth I want you to hear today. You are the who that matters. It matters that you pray. There was something about the the, the life of Mary and the life of Jesus that she was the one that prayed over Jesus. She didn't just take all of her hurt and all of her pain and ball it up and, and hide away from the world. There was something about the fact that she prayed. Because here's the truth. God chose Mary to be the mother of Jesus And because of that, it mattered that she was the one that prayed. Check this out, because here's what happens. Where God gives you responsibility, where he gives you responsibility, God gives you authority. And a lot of you mothers in here have been given a tremendous responsibility. What do we do here in the church? Sometimes there's going to be a little number that pops up on that screen. 
If you have your kids in, in children's ministry, there's a little number that pops up on that screen. Right here, my wife, she's a principal. There's something that happens when kids start acting a fool or when kids need something major. Here at the church, well, uh-oh, put that number up on the screen. We need mom. We need mom. We don't go say, hey, go grab some random woman from, from the, the auditorium and bring her to the children's center. When something gets too extreme for Julie at school or Nurse Kayla, when an aspirin or a Band-Aid won't... No, you can't give an aspirin, can you? When a Band-Aid or a, a pep talk won't do it, who do you call? You call mom. You call dad. There is something about the responsibility that you have been given that gives you authority in that situation. And there is something about when mom comes strolling back there, kids go, uh-oh. No, I'm good. I'm good. Let's go back to class. I don't want to go with her. I don't want to go with her. Or there's something about when the, when, when, when the pain is there. There's something about when that happens. When mom shows up, there's something magical. There's something divine with mom. Like, I love my wife. I love my wife. Like, last night, we're coming home from Arkansas. We went to a graduation. My, my little niece, she graduated from Arkansas. Yeah! Yeah! There's like two hog fans in the crowd. It's good. It's good. It's good. But what, what I loved about it was Gabby was in the back seat. And you know how moms are. Moms just know. They have like this filter for truth. Gabby's in the back seat and she's like, Mom, my tummy hurts. It kind of feels funny. And I love that she just hears the tone of it and Julie's like, You're good. You're good. But there is something about, like, you know what I'm saying? moms am i right there's something about when the kid gets up for the fourth time in the middle of the night and they're like oh I'm thirsty go to bed <laughs> authority gives you authority and there's something about that someone else can come into the house and they'll walk all over them and trample all over them but there's something about when mom speaks and dad but this is mother's day there's something about that so where god gives you responsibility he gives you authority he has given you something that he has given nobody else and so it matters, folks, it matters, ladies, that you pray. It matters that you praise. Where he has given you first responsibility, he hears you first. You see, the Bible talks about this in the scripture. God heard Mary. She was giving praise. She was praying over Jesus. So where God has given you first responsibility, he hears you first. You ever seen when the police show up at the scene of an accident? <laughs> All right, who owns this car? All right, I know I don't need to talk to you. You're the passenger. I need to know who owns this car. The police want to hear you first. It's the same thing in our relationship with God. God has given you that child. God has given you that marriage. God has given you that relationship. He's given you that blessing. He wants to hear it from you first. He wants to see the life that you're protecting. He wants to see what it is that you have. And he hears when you pray for the things that he has given you. Where he has given you responsibility, he hears you first. And where God entrusts you, he hears you most. There's some people in this room that God has given you a responsibility that is tremendous. And I want you to understand that. Some of you, parenting is tough. We have all different kinds of needs. We have all different kinds of children. Some of our children have different needs than other children. And God has given you that child. And where he entrusts you, he hears you most. So mothers, I want you to hear something today. When you look at life and you feel lonely and you feel like the load is too great and you feel like the challenge is too great and you feel like tomorrow will never come or two months down the road or graduation or any of these things, you need to live in the now and understand that in everything, God hears you most because God has entrusted you with that gift. Think about Mary and her situation. Hey, uh, we're going to uh, use you if we could. You know, could we borrow you? We'd like you to be the, the, the mother of the Savior of the world. I mean, I know that it's a big responsibility, but we think you can handle it. Do you think that there was ever any days in Mary's life where she was like, this is bigger than me. I am 15 years old, and you expect me. I've got no training. 
There's no, there's no manual for this. What if I mess up? Think about the stress and the days that she had in her life. When God entrusts you, he hears you. Where God entrusts you, he hears you. So I want us to remember that. Your prayer matters. When God chooses you, he picks you. He chose you to be the mom of your children, and he hears your prayer over your children. They are your responsibility. And I know I'm not saying anything new that moms in this room don't understand, that don't know, but sometimes we need to be reminded of what God has blessed us with. And maybe some of you, you're still praying to be entrusted. You're still praying to be chosen. Well, God chooses people in different ways and at different times and for different purposes and different responsibilities. God is entrusting you with something, and it's our responsibility to cry out to him when he does. You see, the things in your responsibility and your grasp, it matters that you are the one that pray over it. And don't ever underestimate your prayers. When you've been given a trust by God, he hears your prayers most. And Mary wasn't only praying at one point in Jesus' life. She prayed at every point of Jesus' life. Through his birth, through his boyhood, through the upper room, all the way to the crucifixion. And maybe some of you today, moms, your prayers are more important over your kids as well as your marriage. You see, sometimes our focus becomes so enthralled with our kids that we forget to pray for our marriage. Sometimes we become so occupied with our kids, we become so caught up in raising good fruit that our marriage goes on the back burner. We kind of look at that as something that, that okay, you caused this, now we got to raise this. And this is, this is just second nature, it's something behind the scenes. No. It's the first thing. It's the first thing. I've shared before, statistics share that there is a sharp spike in divorce at the 25 year mark. Because we put so much focus and so much desire and so much energy and so much heart and so much pain into raising our fruit that we forget our marriage. I know that that's a whole other February series, but think about this. Moms, your prayers matter most. It matters who prays. And this was always easy for Mary. I mean, she had a perfect child. Think about Jesus. It's like, Mary's probably thinking, I should write a book. I mean, my kid is perfect. But believe it or not, Mary had more children. Mary had more children. Mary had four boys and two girls. Can you imagine what it would be like to be Jesus' brother? I wish I would have put the clip up there. There's this comedian, Michael Jr., he shares about this. And he said, can you imagine what it would be like to be James, Jesus' brother? Because he's not James the Christ, he's just James. And you think everybody would look at Jesus and they remember the miracles he did where he turns the water into the wine. And then after Jesus is gone, they see James at the next wedding and they're all out of wine and people are looking at James. He's like, what? (laughs) We saw what your brother did. What you going to do? I'm just James. Can you imagine what that would be like? And so Mary has this perfect child, and then she has more children, and they're nothing like Jesus. What a letdown. There's a story of a little girl, and she looks at her mom, and she's a little girl, probably about four years old, and she looks at her mom, and she sees her mom is getting gray hair. This is before die, I guess. I don't know. And she looks at her mom and she says, Mom, how come you have gray hair coming? And the mom looks at the little girl and she says, Sweetie, every time you do something wrong, I get another gray hair. And the little girl looks at that and she thinks about it for a minute and then she goes, Well, then what happened to Grandma? (laughs) But she... God chose Mary to be the prayer warrior over Jesus and you to be the prayer warrior over your children and over your family. You see, this is the rebel part, folks. When we raise our children in a manner that you choose to pray over your children, when you choose to pray over your family, when we live in a world today that's all about itself, 
When we live in a world today that chooses to abort children, when we live in a world that we choose to save pets and kill children, you're a, you're a rebel. And I say that I'm a pro-lifer through and through. And I know that that's ugly sometimes, and I know that's a challenge, and I know that I'm a man, I, I can't say that. Folks, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the product of a 17-year-old mom. My mom was 17 years old when she had me. And I can promise you at that moment there was a scared little girl that thought this wasn't the plan. That thought there have got to be other options. I'm thankful that my mom took a moment and she stepped up to the plate. Because where there's great responsibility, there's authority. Where God entrusts you, He hears you. And what is so cool is my life was not perfect. Living with my mom was tough. Do you know what it's like to have a 17-year-old mom move away from her family and move to Houston, Texas? No family, no friends. My mom hustled. She found a job. She found a car. I was raised by everybody and their brother. Black, white, Hispanic. It was all right. My life was good. It wasn't bad. But I say this because, check this out. My mom was not a believer when she had me at 17 years old. And just last week, my mom shared a picture. I should have put it up, up there. Hindsight's 2020. But about five years ago, I had the opportunity to baptize my mom. Tell me that God can't redeem things. Where God entrusts you, He hears you. And I had a very public argument this week about abortion and about rape and about this and I said I happen to know some people like myself it's amazing what God can do when he's given a chance to redeem something because we never know what his plan is and your life may feel like a jumbled mess and you're taking two steps forward and one step back and you may feel like it's spinning out of control you may feel like your marriage is in shambles. You may feel like it can't be redeemed. It can't be picked up. It can't be restored. You may look at your children and say, they're never amount to anything. But God gave you something that He gave nobody else. Authority in that life. You have the opportunity to speak into a life like nobody else, moms. And I want you to understand that. I'm a 40-year-old man here today that had a 17-year-old mom. And I've got three little girls of my own and I pastor a church and I have this amazing wife. You don't tell me that God can't redeem something. So I don't know where you're at, but you need to understand your future. Let go of the past and understand what God has for you. Don't tell me God can't restore your broken marriage. Don't tell me that God can't redeem you from the addiction that you're caught up in. Don't tell me that God can't bring you a child. Don't tell me that God can't give you a purpose. I should be on the streets. I should be caught up in addiction like half of my family. Don't tell me what God can't do. We have to understand and give Him authority in our life as He's given us authority in someone else's. So moms, God made you a rebel. If he has redeemed you and you are following him, you are a rebel mom. Mary laid down the foundation and it's time for us to pick up that cross, to carry that mantle and live that life. Maybe you have a marriage today that's fallen apart. James chapter 1 verse 19 gives us the best knowledge that we can carry into a marriage that's falling apart. Be quick to listen, be slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And our human nature is just the opposite. We're slow to listen, we're quick to speak, and we're quick to become angry. Let's have some wisdom today. Let's hear what the Word of God has to say and apply it to our life. Let's be rebels in this world. Let's not be about ourselves. Let's be quick to listen, slow to anger, slow to speak. So that God can grab a hold of us and do something with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for Mary and the role that she took. The role that she accepted, God, that she didn't rebel from that and run from it. That, God, she stepped in at such a tender young age and accepted the role that you had for her. And I know that there's some ladies in here today 
They've been scared moms at one time. Maybe their kids came into, into the world, maybe not the way that they planned, but here they are. And God, you had the ability to redeem and restore anything. With every head bowed and every eye closed and no one looking around, I want you to understand, moms, God's given you a purpose. I want you to understand, ladies, today that God has given you a purpose. If you're not a mom yet and you're praying about it and you're hoping to be that, you keep praying. You keep praising. You keep living that life. God may deliver something that you never imagined, that you never thought. And when he does, you cannot deny the power that he has. With no one looking around, every head bowed for just a moment. If your life's in a trial right now, if your life's a frustrating thing right now, if your marriage is struggling, if your, your parenting is struggling, if there's some turmoil going on, if you're fighting something, if that's you right now, I just want to pray for you. Would you just raise your hand so I can encourage you and just pray with you this morning? I just want to pray, I got you. I got you. I got you. Who else? I just want to pray over you. Maybe there's a situation near you that you're praying for, that you're encouraging. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your, I don't know. Maybe it's your parents. I got you. I want to pray for you this morning. If it's something close to you, you've got a responsibility there. God has entrusted you something and he hears your prayer. Now, you've got to be the one to pray it. Not someone else. We can't just give up. We have to keep praising and we have to keep praying. So together, let's pray as a body, as a family. You're together with us today. We want to encourage you, but you pray with us today too. Heavenly Father, speak it out with me. Heavenly Father, Jesus, hear our cries today. You understand and know the pain in my life. You understand the turmoil. You know exactly what I'm going through. And God, you know my heart's desire. Allow my desire to line up with your desire. Put it within me, God. Give me the ability to pray through it and praise through it and give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, let God work this morning. Let God work in your life. Moms, we love you. We thank you for the gift that you are. We thank you for the magic spit that you have that cleans and heals everything. We thank you for the, the things that you put up with. We thank you for your perseverance, for your cookies, for your everything. God, thank you for these moms. We love you. As you leave today, do us a favor. Don't forget your children. And grab one of those baby bottles, and we have a gift for you at the door as well. God bless you. We love you. Be sure to get a pick out there in the lobby as you leave today. We want to get those from you. All right? God bless you. We will see you next week.